your homework because you guys do need, you are going to want to know how to do a problem like this. So in this example, we're just going to follow our steps. The first, example, first step is the group the two terms. So we just say 1, y equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 6. Group the two terms. Now we have something in step 2 because you guys can see our a is not equal to positive 1. So we need to factor so a is equal to 1. So what can I factor out to make sure that a is equal to 1? I can factor out a negative one, right? Because technically, this is a negative one, right? So you can factor out a negative one. So step two comes into play here. So y equals negative 1 times x squared minus 6x. Does everybody see? Remember, when you factor out a negative 1, you're basically you're dividing each term by negative 1, kind of like what we did in our word. Yes? It, it, it already was negative. So if you divide out a negative, it becomes, it's a positive. And you could create a box if you want to if you're having trouble with that. Um, now, step number three, find the value c that completes the square. So we just do b divided by 2 squared. Negative 6 divided by 2 squared. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. And here's step 4, the hardest one. Add and subtract the value. So we have y equals negative 1 times x, oops, I want to use black, times x squared minus 6x plus 9 minus 6 minus 9. Does everybody see what I did? Add in and subtract it, just like the other one. Does anybody have any questions up to here? Because I've got to add one more step to this. Anybody have any questions? Right there, no. Now. Remember when I said, guys, if you add and subtract on the, same, on, on the same side, you keep the equation equivalent, right? I'm not adding a 9 right here. I'm not. I'm adding a 9 that technically, via distributive property, is going to be multiplied by a negative 1. You guys see that? This 9 is, is inside the parentheses. And those parentheses are being multiplied by a negative 1. So yes, I'm adding a 9. I wrote down add 9. But that add 9 is being multiplied by negative 1. So if I subtract negative 9, I would also have to multiply it by a negative 1. So if you factor out a number, meaning if you, if you do step number 2, you have to make sure whatever number you factored out that that number that you add is being multiplied by that number. So therefore, when you subtract the number, you also have to multiply it. Does that make sense? Yes? No? Maybe so? Step number five, write it as a binomial squared. So x plus b divided by 2. So let's look at our b divided by 2. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Thank you. You know what, you guys are letting these boys over talk some of you. There's like two or three boys that keep on wanting to say every single answer. We're going to change that. So now we have negative 1 times this is um, x minus 3 squared. Negative 9 times negative 1 is positive 9. Positive 9 minus 6 is going to be a positive 3. Follow me? Yes? So now um, we can identify the vertex, which is 3, comma 3. The axis of symmetry is axis symmetry is x equals 3. Um, if we want to determine the max or min, well, is the graph opening down or opening up? down, right? Because there's a negative. That a is negative. So it's opening down. So therefore, our vertex, is that going to be a maximum or a minimum? Maximum. maximum. So we could say it's going to be a maximum. And that maximum point is 3, comma 3. Our domain is the best and easiest one to do. Domain is negative infinity to infinity, which is all real numbers, right? And then the range, we got to think about this. And I'll, I'll actually, I'll go over here. So 
Remember, ladies and gentlemen, when we did the domain and range over here, the we, when you're calculating a range, you're calculating the lowest y value to the highest y value, right? So the lowest high value over here was negative 4, and then it goes all the way up to infinity. But just think of, but try to imagine this graph. If the graph goes, is facing down, the lowest y value is going to be negative infinity. And the highest value has to be its maximum. So what is the y coordinate of the maximum? 3. And 3 is a number, right? On the graph, on the y coordinate. So instead of using parentheses, we're going to use a bracket. Because 3 is a number in there. Infinity, as I mentioned, is not actually a point, you know, of a coordinate on your graph. But 3 is, so we use a bracket. Just like when I was using inequalities, I used the equal to. That kind of represents the same thing. It's included. Whoa.